My name is Alyssa Haverdink, and I'm going to be talking to you guys about wisdom and aging. So first, I'm going to start with just a brief overview about what we're going to be talking about today in this video. So first, we're going to talk about some myths about wisdom and aging and how they're related. Then we're also going to talk about what wisdom is and what it can do for you. We're also going to talk about some factors in wisdom perception and how people often see wisdom. And lastly, we're going to talk about how to gain wisdom. So the first myth of wisdom and aging that we're going to talk about is that all cognitive abilities decline with age. Many people assume that older adults' memory, fluid, and crystallized intelligence all decrease with age, but this is not necessarily true. Fluid intelligence is the knowledge that doesn't require any prior knowledge or training, whereas crystallized intelligence is the ability to use previously learned knowledge and experience. And this has actually been shown to be able to increase with age, whereas fluid intelligence does often decrease with older age. The second myth we're going to address is that old age and wisdom are always related. Now, this is not true, um, but a lot of people often assume that it is. In a study done, 78% of people said that they related age to wisdom. And when asked to nominate someone as wise, the average nominated person was 60 years old, which is considered an older adult. The last myth that we're going to talk about then is that situations do not impact wisdom. This is not true because life experience often greatly influences one's wisdom regardless of their age. This means that if people go through difficult life experiences, they can have more opportunity to become wise because they've had more life experience. Um, studies also show that people tend to act wiser or give better advice if they are not personally involved in the situation. So now that we have addressed some myths about wisdom, let's talk about what wisdom really is. First, wisdom involves experience. Wisdom is pragmatic and applies to real life situations, and it often comes from life experience. The second thing that wisdom involves is knowledge. This can be knowledge about the world, the self, other people, or really anything. Third, wisdom involves good judgment. One qualitative study tested wisdom by presenting a difficult life situation and asking the participant for how they would deal with that life situation. The advice that they gave was then a predictor of how wise that person was evaluated to be. Lastly, wisdom often varies by age or the way that people defi define wisdom depends on their age. So for example, adolescents often view wisdom as empathy and support. Young adults or college students often view wisdom as assertion or self-determination. And then older adults often view wisdom as knowledge and flexibility. Another way to view wisdom is like an equation. A lot of people see wisdom and age as being equal. If you have one, you have the other. But a better way to view wisdom is that it's a combination of multiple things, such as your age, your personality, and your experience. Wisdom can also be very helpful in real life situations. For example, it helps deal with important or difficult matters in life. It can also improve life quality and increase perceived control. It also helps with increasing coping abilities, which is especially important for older adults as they are going through a lot of transitions. This could be going through retirement or relocation as they move in with their kids or into a nursing home perhaps. This could also be dealing with the death of a loved one. Wisdom helps with these coping abilities, and so that can be really beneficial for older adults. And then lastly, wisdom can also help solve practical problems. There are many factors that impact the way that people perceive wisdom, two of which are gender and culture. First, your gender can impact the way that you perceive wisdom, as older men are often seen as wiser than older women, and you can see this in a lot of movies, particularly children's movies like Disney shows. Second, culture can impact the way that you perceive or use wisdom. Japanese younger adults often use more wisdom related reasoning techniques than similar age Americans. And also peers tend to rate your wisdom higher than you would if you were doing a self-report study of your own wisdom. Now that we have talked a little bit about what wisdom is and how it is beneficial, I think it's important to talk about how we can grow in our own wisdom. 
The first way we can do this is through general personal conditions. This can be your mental ability and actually taking advantage of your mental abilities. This can also be developing the personality trait of openness and being willing to experience new things. Another thing that helps is specific expertise conditions, such as mentoring. This can be where you are mentoring someone younger or someone older is mentoring you. This can also just be as simple as practicing wisdom-related techniques. Facilitative life contexts are also helpful. This can apply to education, leadership experience, or simply just self-reflection, which can be through a counseling center or it can just be by yourself or with a trusted friend, as long as you're facing your life issues and actually analyzing what has happened to you and what that has implicated in your life. Another thing to note is, it, is that it does take time. Although wisdom and age are not always necessarily related, older age does give you more opportunity to develop the time and the skill to grow in wisdom. In conclusion, today we have talked about the myths about wisdom and aging and how they're related. We've talked about what wisdom is and what it can do. We talked about factors in wisdom perception, and we also talked about how we can grow in our own personal wisdom. If you would like to learn more about these things, you can look up these references. Thank you.